My name is Dario, aka Duddy Dario. I'm a painter from Montreal, Quebec, Canada. I've been painting sneakers, I've done food art, and I'm most recently painting cartoon characters in cubistic abstract style. <laughs> Anxiety was a massive factor in my life um, from even early on. It still is a factor today, um, but I've learned how to cope with it over, the, over my lifetime. Um, but specifically talking about like my early childhood, anxiety was very, very you know, hard to deal with. I was, it was reaching a point um, you know, in early elementary school where anxiety would you know, literally plague me to the point where I would get sick. I would be in you know, classes, you know, just, just general like English classes or French classes, anytime I would have to answer a question in front of the class or do an oral presentation or answer a, a problem on the board, I would, you know, I would get so anxious that I would, you know, either start vomiting or, you know, just getting sick or just, you know, crying. It was, I couldn't deal with the anxiety at that age. And that kind of followed me all the way, even into high school where, you know, the days that I would have to do oral presentations, I would find any reason not to go to school or, you know, I would even in some cases even fail entire projects just to avoid having to talk or having to be in that position. And uh, it was it was hard to deal with, man. There was a point in my life where I didn't think it would ever like stop. But there's a quote from a guy named Zig Ziglar where it's an acronym of fear. It says false evidence appearing real. And so it's referring to the fact that a lot of people are afraid of things that oftentimes they shouldn't necessarily even be afraid of. These are things that they can overcome. It's just an illusion of things that, you know, it's their fear, it's the anxiety that's, you know, preventing them from actually going forward with those things. But these are things that they can actually do and probably do very well. It's just the illusion of the fear um, that pre prevents them from actually going through with it. And I think a lot of people can relate to the fact that there's a lot of things that most people have done in their life that they were once afraid of or fearful of, and then they actually went out and did it. And then they realized later, like, but that was so easy that I shouldn't even been afraid of that. And I think that was kind of how I was with my anxiety. The more I would actually overcome it, the more I would realize, you know, there's really nothing to be worrying about here. Half the time I'm doing an oral presentation in school, no one's listening anyways, not even the teacher. So it's like just understanding why I felt that way and understanding how to go about it and how to adapt with it, um, I overcame it. One of the main things that people identify with with an artist is the type of work that they do, but also like the way they react and the way they engage around that work. I think a lot of people like my art, but they like more the fact that I'm passionate about what I'm doing. They can see it the way I talk. They can, you know, see it in the art itself. And I think more people identify with that rather than just being a nice painting or, you know, a colorful thing on the wall. You know, art is as much as it's promoted as this glamorous industry and that being an artist is the greatest thing, you know, a lot of it is pretty grimy it's pretty um there's a lot of for the two days you have an art show there's months of actually being in a studio or in a room just covered in paint and you know stuck to yourself and just facing a bunch of canvases and actual just a lot of work that goes into it and i feel like that aspect of it the behind the scenes or the day-to-day -day is never really shown in that light a lot of artists you see on instagram painting in a three thousand dollar outfit that's probably not the reality of it Chances are you're shirtless, you haven't showered in four weeks, and uh, there's mosquitoes flying around your head, but, um, or maybe that's just me, but, yeah, I just think there's a lack of representation in terms of the truth of what it's like to be an artist in today's world. I think it's, it's a glorification. I think everything is glorified. Being a musician is glorified. Everything, they show the tours, they show the performances, they show the concerts, they show the exhibitions, you know, but they don't show the months you spend, you know, in the, in the dark type of, you know, working on the project that you're trying to put out there, the obstacles, the, you know, the breakdowns you have once in a while when you're trying to, you know, put your idea onto canvas. And I think if there's only one artist I can really think of who's reached the highest standard, but really addresses the issues is the guy David Cho. I think he deserves all the flowers because he's obtained a, attained a level in art that is, you know, top five, the most one of the highest paying artists in the world. But every time he posts, he, he really addresses it as transparently as possible. He talks about all the issues that artists go through. He talks about um, you know, the obstacles he's had throughout his life. And these are a lot of things that, that he had to go through a lot earlier in life that a lot of other artists can relate to. And so I think there needs to be more of those people out there. And I feel like um, I wanna kind of participate in that as well because I realize there is a few, there's not many people who look at me in that light 
but I feel like there's a, it's important that the small amount of people that do look at me as somebody worth following, I should show them a real and proper representation of what it's like to be an artist. I think the happiest people in the world are the people that are grateful for what they have and um, you know, they, 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 they take pride and take happiness in the small things in life. They don't necessarily fret about you know, what their career is like. They, they, they get happiness through a nice haircut or a, a beer at the end of the day or a great conversation with a friend or a good dinner. And these are people that, you know, I think those people have it down a bit easier. I think it's more important to ask yourself, what are the things in your life that are making you unhappy versus what are the things in your life that make you happy? Because mo a lot of people struggle with that. So I think if you can list five things that are making you unhappy, I would do that and then I would try to fix those five things because or just take simple steps or small steps on a daily basis to try to address that issue that is making your life, you know, depress, uh, you know, making your life miserable to a certain extent. One of the pieces of advice that I got when I was in college that really resonated with me is I had a teacher that kind of mentored all of us and he offered this piece of advice where he said in order to be successful, you need to become comfortable with being uncomfortable. And I remember hearing that and not fully understanding it. It's stepping out of your comfort zone. It's doing the things that you're fearful. It's doing the things that put pressure on you in certain cases that are gonna help you grow. And the lessons you're gonna learn from that, the failures you're gonna have to encounter are the things that make you a better artist or a better person down the line. I think number two would probably be to, um, you know, become like a connoisseur of your art domain. I think if you really like for example, painting, I think you should look at as much art as possible. I think you should network with other artists. You should attend art shows um, to try to you know, learn from other people because I think if you, everybody has something to offer and everybody's very passionate and knowledgeable in one thing or many things, and you can learn something from everybody. I think a lot of people need to look at their goals in a different light in terms of, this is something I wanna achieve. It's very achievable, it's attainable but it's also I need to be aware of the things I need, I need to do on a daily or weekly or monthly basis to try to put myself in a position where I can realistically attain that goal. And there's a great quote that I feel like when it comes to goals, most people fail in life, not because they aim too high and miss, because they aim too low and hit. And so I think when it comes to setting goals, you should always strive to do a, to set a goal high enough, a, a dream. I don't, think it, I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but I think it's very important then again to list the amount of hard decisions and risks and sacrifices that are gonna be necessary to take in order to achieve that goal. In terms of my childhood, there was a funny story. It's a true story, but growing up, I was a terrible student in school. Like, I, math tests, any, any test in elementary school, either for anxiety purposes or just not knowing how to do basic multiplication, I would fail every test. And so my mom, growing up, gave me like an incentive to try to do better in, in school. And so she'd say, if you just pass a math test, I'll buy you like a booster pack of Pokemon cards. And bro, man, when she gave me that incentive at like 10 years old, I was all in it. And I was studying, like I was trying to get into Harvard for like a grade four math test. And I would be doing the test, I was sharp in pencil, all focused. You know that feeling when you finish a test and you go, I nailed that. And then you get the test back like two weeks later, and it's like 6%. That was me all throughout elementary school. And so I'd go home on my math test to my mom. And I'd be like, yo, I failed, but like everybody in the class failed. Like it wasn't just me, and I was like 17%. And so for that reason, I don't have a lot of Pokemon cards because I actually never passed the math test in elementary school. There's no reason for me not to be happy. Everything in my life is, I'm, I'm, I'm satisfied with, I'm content with, my family's good. I have a great group of friends. Um, my art is everything I wanted to do. I'm getting opportunities to display my art and I get to meet great people in the industry and in Montreal in general. So I think all in all, I mean, I'm definitely, I'm happy and I think I'm only gonna get happier. Uh, maybe not, but we'll see. <laughs> maybe not. We'll see. We'll do this, we'll rerun we'll re this in three years and I'll answer that question, I'll re-answer. Yeah.